Hey there, fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and welcome back to How I Make a Painting Part 4. This one's going to be a little bit long, but I hope you stick around. So, we're going to be diving back into uh, this painting, Breach the Labyrinth. Uh, this is the real sort of meat and potatoes of this painting. This is going to take a me a lot more time than the other previous parts have. Uh, chances are I will be cutting up this video a little bit, but I'm going to do my best to keep the bulk of this uh, real in re both in real time and uh, uh, is more a little more extended than I would normally show in this channel. So let's go ahead and drag out some paint and get started. All right, so I've already laid out some color here. I've got my used used uh, used paint gray mix, Prussian blue hue, uh, some of this quinacridone, Nicolazo gold, high flow, transparent red iron oxide, cad red, and some Titan buff, just to kind of get myself going here. Uh, since this is all nice and dry since two weeks ago when we last painted, uh, we should be fine. I want to start by probably mixing up a nice and dark because I want to get this edge. I'm not going to touch the, the light background section here. That's That I usually just do in that first pass uh, without any extra stuff. But I do want to get a nice shadow color built up. Mostly using that gray and some of the... Some of the gold, I think, there. It is a little bit greener than I'd like. That's why the red's there. To kick that back. Feels pretty good. Took all this time to set the canvas up on an angle, uh, on the right angle, and I have to turn it regardless. So I'm just gonna get this squared away first. where I want it. I'm just going to pull it on that edge. Wipe that off. And then just pull it out. It's a brush. This is my trusty uh, Windsor & Newton Cotman watercolor brush that I use for acrylics. I get a nice clean edge with that for most, most stuff. This blue will help offset the color a little bit for the rest of the rest of the piece. But I do want to mix in some of the reds as well here for that gray. That is the bulk the bulk color that I want is that those oranges and those reds. Because we did the underpainting last time around, I don't need to use as much paint this time, and I can let some of that underlying color kind of show through. As I kind of see fit. I glaze with it more than I would might otherwise. It's not bad. See this from this angle now. But I'm looking, and actually, I can see that there's glare for you guys, and there's glare for me too. So I'm gonna prop this up a little so I can actually see what I'm doing. There we are. A few strokes go in the other way as well to kind of make it look a little more modeled brick like even feels pretty good now I'm not going to go all the way to that blue at least on this edge I'll pull it on this back side since it w we will would will will would and probably I'm going to keep it darker over here and any kind of extra oranges I'll bring up as a glaze later. Whoops. Yeah. Brilliant. If you guys remember from the initial digital sketch, I was thinking way more oranges, and I still am, but I am allowing myself to experiment and work with other color and allow that to more naturally be brought into the piece.
And the color's never never going to be a one-to-one -one match for any piece that I do. It's it's just there as sort of a mental guide of what, like I'm kind of thinking like these colors, but not necessarily. It's not set in stone. No, uh, no pun intended for the given piece. Let's bring a little more red into this. I'm going to transparent uh, iron oxide to bring some of that back. Hint of the hint of the the white maybe just to lighten everything. This is why I like this this Titan buff because it's a lot more mild than a regular <laughs> titanium white, and it creates a much more natural light to stuff. More there. And as I mentioned in part three, I'm gonna. This pink is not going to go away. That'll be a lot of the finishing glaze work and, and maybe some sun rays and, and stuff. So I'm not completely ignoring this, this pink. I'm just allowing myself to get a better and more complex range of colors uh, before I focus on, on what the light's going to do. Although I do need to turn this again for this angle. Because this whole piece is a lot of big rock shapes, uh, probably not going to be switching out from this brush a whole heck of a lot. Possibly at all. I mean, next week when we're doing, or two weeks rather, when, when, it's, when we hit the next part of this, and I'm doing the detail work, obviously that'll be a little bit different, but I like this, getting this orange in here. And then balancing it with that side. So this side doesn't seem really out of place compared to the other side. A little off camera here, I see. Oops. Got to remember that I am making a video today. It's not just about... I mean, if, if, this, if I wasn't worried about the camera and the angle and the glare here, I would be working flat on a table and leaning way over this. Um, well, I got to think about presentation, of course. Although I may need to adjust focus a little here. Now this wall color, I really like, and I definitely want to play with that into the baseland a bit. But I want to thin it out because I do want to keep some of this red. So rinse my brush here. A little of that orange there. Uh, and this, and just, well, you know what, I don't normally do this, but I'm already seeing some issues with flow. So I'm having a little, ooh, hello, GAC 100. I'm normally totally fine just thinning everything with water, but I'm, because, especially too, because this is a store-bought canvas, everything's kind of beating up a little bit more. So I want a little extra bit of a, a glazy and glazy of ability here. I'll just switch that. Now that feels pretty good. A little more even, just to help the flow. Reds. The sketch is popping up way into here, so I think I'm actually going to raise this line a bit to there. And I'll, I'll adjust the rock a little later here, but yeah, that'll have to come up a little bit further. So we even grab the dark to really accentuate that. Changes my perspective lines a bit. As well as this line. It's the it's the joy of painting is being able to 
find these new shapes and, and again like I'm continually going over my sketch and going over my even my underpainting and really bringing in some new life to this to where it wasn't quite that color before you know and what's cool about being dark right next to this is because as soon as I bring in that highlight layer and dry brush over that it's just gonna pop um, so I'm totally fine with this being really dark right here especially knowing that uh, it's going to add just that extra bit of uh, finesse later. Paint's really thick here, more so than I was intending, but it's oranges. Looks like I am going to cover that red up, but that's all right. Again, just finding, finding out where things are going here. You got to be able to allow yourself to have just a little bit of freedom when building stuff like this. I can still see the red under there a little. All right. This big rock shape. I'm just going to grab blue and gray right now. It's not going to stay this color. But I do want to reestablish where that's at. Before we get too far in. All right. That blue gray mixed with the orange and red in there. I really like this this reddish tone for the rocks in general, so I'm going to do my best to keep that going for the rest of this. I'm going to start now just kind of chiseling out these other shapes. I'm actually, again, I have my, my sketch off to the side. And I'm looking at that more than I'm looking at the color concept, because the color concept is, again, just a really vague guide. And I'd rather it look more like the sketch. And that's what I love about these flat brushes, is because if you're doing rocks, that's literally all it is. You're just literally pushing that angle out and letting the brush do the work. being able to throw in some other little stones and things as I find them in the composition. I like the idea of putting maybe another one right in here. Balance, balance the composition out a bit. Find, find all these shapes again since we really traced, really went way over them quite a bit. Like now a little bit of light where I need it to stand out. Just want to have this in front of that. Because this is really wet, it allows me to really kind of just blend the color out from where I have it coming in onto these rocks to make that feel way more natural. And then where I need it to be angular, I can because of this brush. But all that color, but all of this color that we built up, whatever, five minutes ago is allowing me to uh, push those shapes around in interesting ways. Get this on the shadow side. And deal with all that. Let's 
it's like, yeah, where's, where are the shapes? Where are we going with them? All of that kind of just comes out as I'm working. there a bit. And if you notice, I'm not mixing, I'm not grabbing my knife and mixing big piles of color. I'm doing this just brush load at a time. Um, so I really love being able to just manipulate a little bit of color at a time. And, and in doing so, it makes the piece a lot more complex. Uh, both in color and in, uh, you know, shape and value and everything. So many artists are like, oh, I, I, I got to mix that same color again. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> just, just play. Work it back. Find, uh, so it's, it's also why, like, the brush work for a lot of the, the, the old masters and everything, like why everything looks so awesome. It's like, because they didn't sit there and mix like the same seven batches of color. They weren't afraid to let things live on the palette. I can start pushing some of the lighter color. I gotta, I gotta fix the color of this rock first. Blue is a nice placeholder, but I, now I really got it. I mean, and it is in the shadow, so it's gonna be, it's gonna lean that color anyway. But more reds in there. I'm gonna reach a point very soon here, though, where I have to give it a few minutes to dry. Because I do want to come in and uh, and do and do my my dry brushing layer today as well. I uh, just keep making this thing bigger and bigger, don't I? Make it a rounder there. There we go. Indications of some shadows. Yeah, I'm pretty. Things are really wet now. So I can, at this point, kind of only do so much. But luckily, one of those things is adding uh, just a little bit more color and a little more highlights to this. And you can see what I mean too with the with really building in that orange and everything. And again, the pink the pink's gonna be that that last dry brush, that last highlight to just give it a little extra pop. Uh, but the dry brushing I'm doing today is gonna be like the base color of the rocks, rather than the uh, the highlights of of the the light source. So it's essentially gonna be uh, two two layers each of, of a dark and a light. This is all just mid tone stuff. And that's the bulk of what I do is is just create the create a, a nice rich midtone, and then do either two layers one one or two layers in each direction of a dark and a light, just to make all those shapes come to life, and then some detailing at the end. But um, like all of this, I, I heard the the term sometime uh, probably about two or three years ago, and I re I really love the uh, the concept of it. And that is, uh, the term is uh, the illusion of detail. Um, there's a lot going on here, but none of it's detailed. It's, it's all very loose brushwork. I would say, especially like up in here, you're not getting a ton of actual um, specific, I'm going to do this a little bit. You're not getting a, a ton of specific detail there. It's all just very, it's, it's just that loose, working of the brush and, and the shape of the brush doing everything. Uh, so when I do come back in with a liner brush and detail stuff, I, all I have to do is kind of just lightly trace over some of those, those lines that are there and everything just comes to life. So let me grab a little bit of a lighter color now. Get that tight and buff, mix into some of that middle crap. a little glaze in there too, why not? 
I'm going to sit down actually for the first time in, in, in uh, today. I've been standing for all of this. So now, it's that really just that the start of where so those highlights are going to be. I'm going to be sure I'm not picking up too much of the dark. I'm going to use using just the corner of the brush here, just to bring a little extra light in. Come to think of it, I can't sit because now I'm the one getting the glare. I can't see what I'm working on. All right, so I'm, I am going to have to stand, which is going to just make it things a little awkward for me, but that's okay. I have dealt with worse. Like last year when my wrist was broken and I literally couldn't do this at all. You know, when, you, when you have to learn how to paint with your paint with your left hand in, in ways that you're not really comfortable doing it, it doesn't make thing make for an easy experience yeah, so I can start pulling more of this light in here now yeah, this rocks just gonna disappear I, I, I need the I need the room for these strokes that way this rocks probably gonna get coated and recoated with paint a few times just because of where it's sitting and I, the fact that I didn't do this layer with the darks and lights sooner. When it comes down to these these rough edges like this, I can always just glaze it out later, or just a little bit of detail work or something. Like th this is this is such an easy fix when it needs to be. Yeah, that's all right. This is kind of leaning lighter. Starting to t paint, starting to tack up a little bit, which is good. It's going to allow me to start doing some, not quite dry brushing, but but the indications of kind of that is a little bit. Do need to turn this though. This whole section is going to be that upper level. And this is really cool. I don't know if you guys can see this from your your angle or perspective, or whatever. But there's a little line of paint right here, which my brush is starting to pick up on, and that's one of those those spots from last week, or last uh, last part rather, where I was like, this is, all these these thicker layers of paint are gonna show up more when I start dry brushing and doing the upper layers, and that's exactly one of those lines that's doing that. It adds that little bit of extra uh, complex detail. Yeah, we're we're already tacking up. I I shouldn't have any problem uh, starting the starting the, at least the first dark uh, shadow layer right after this. And I'm constantly thinking about this the, the initial perspective lines here that I made. So all of my all of my brushwork and my lines are are literally. Um, focused around where those where that light is and where where those those lines are. So I'm you know, I'm doing those, but I'm also really thinking a bit about keeping that uh, those strokes a little more directional. In addition to the the long the longer vertical strokes, I can keep that. In there.
This rock's going to be interesting because this is basically entirely in the shadow. So I'm really going to have to play with just barely highlighting this to the point where you can kind of just see the edge a little bit. That's probably going to be the, the biggest challenge of this whole piece. All right, I do need to drop this again for this angle. Total, total angle reversal. Yeah, really starting to tack up now. It's 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 hard to see it because it's it's uh, or, or hard to tell because it's the it's the the darker colors tend to be shinier. So I'm like, am I dry enough to do this? Yeah, we're definitely going to be dry enough for the for the darker, not quite dry brushing, but but darker layer similar to what I'm doing with the white here. Ah, looks pretty good. Yeah. A little bit of cast lighting back in here. That feels pretty good. As you can see, that already that that layer alone has already brought a lot of interesting uh, color into this piece, as well as uh, a bit more of that. What I kind of was saying before the illusion of detail. Actually, the way this is sitting is really lending itself to another pathway of sorts. I'm gonna get a little bit of that dark. Can, yeah, it's like at this point now, I can I do end up starting to find some early detail stuff that I want to do, like a set of stairs or something here that leads up and then around, disappears into the back. Yeah, this this is really the time to start finding some of those other details, which is always really fun to do. There. As long as it's like this, because it, because we're still pretty loose, you know, I can find these, find these other little shapes and stories and everything in the piece that I had no intention of putting there initially, but it's like, you know what would be perfect right in here? Path, little monuments, you know, things that uh, just accentuate the the composition a bit. And, and it's kind of like the idea of that rock that was there. It's like okay, that it was just kind of there, but now it's like okay, where what's what's going on in this piece? What's this world? Why why is this stuff here? You know, indication of some of those lines back in there. And again, like w that was what two or three lines in here, and it just it, it forces the eye to start seeing those that that movement more than it, it would have otherwise had. Okay, I need to mix a dark that's not really on this palette, so I gotta slide some color aside here and grab a new palette. <laughs> Okay, so I'm about to do something that I know a lot of artists will be like, that is sacrilegious, and that is add black. <laughs> um, this is not how to paint realistically. This is how, to, how I do my work, so deal with it. Not a, not a ton here, just enough to, to darken everything beyond the reds and blues that I've got. And in fact, I'm going to probably be adding way more of this brown than anything else. Browns, I get more blue in there. Velvety, deep, chocolatey kind of color. With blue in it. More like an Oreo, maybe. Alright, that's, that is a, that is a nice rich dark that I can come in and bring everything to life with. 
I mean, I'm almost never using just pure black unless it's if I'm using pure black, it's, it's the it's the end of the end of the piece detail section. Okay, getting as much of that water out of my brush as I can. So I'm gonna move my rag over here as well. All right, now I am gonna sit down, hoping I can tilt this down without it being too heavy on the glare. Kind of a mixed bag. <coughs> but I do need to sit down for this, so I do apologize for the glare you're getting. But I, re I really need to really need to concentrate a bit here. So, you know, screw it, I'll, I'll, I still gotta tilt it. Because it's the thing is, I, I, I was fine when I leaned back, and as soon as I leaned forward, I'm like, I still can't see it. <laughs> All right. Okay, I decided to zoom in a little since I'm just working with that one color. And now we're just going to be a, a pretty minimal, uh, let me pull this for a second, uh, pretty minimal amount of paint. I'm not quite dry brushing, I'm keeping the, br the bristles moist, but. I'm really just pulling that out, working with very, very little paint on the, br the bristles. Uh, because we are, if we're not totally dry, but we are tacky enough that I, I don't mind, I don't think I'm going to rip any paint off. So at this point, I can just start really kind of, well, we are kind of dry brushing. I mean, I'll grab a little bit more paint, a little more paint than dry brushing entails, but it does allow me to really kind of build in those darks. And this, this part of this process is going to be a lot slower, so I'll be thinking a lot about my shadows and where, where things are um, and trying not to rip paint off that, that's already there. Um, and for me, the shadow layer is, the, is usually where I find a lot of my fun details in, in the piece. I mean, the, the highlighter does it a little bit, but not to the same extent. Um, and this is why I love working on canvas too, because the, the thickness and texture of the canvas really, really allow me to just drag the brush along. And it just does, you know, what canvas does is it, it creates, creates the texture and as you drag with the brush, that bumpiness, uh, which I know some artists don't really like, but it, it really allows me to, to just get that subtle application of color that uh, just literally is, is in pretty much impossible to do with wood or any, or any other smoother substrate. And as I need more paint, I'll grab it, but. I, I'm, only, I'm only reaching for paint where I'm like, okay, I need it to be crisper or darker. And we're just pulling it. I'm going to grab a little bit of that white on the corner of my brush right now, though, because I'm seeing a section here where I just need a little extra bit of where that was. Light coming in from the other side. And back to that deep, that deep reddish chocolatey color. Those overlapping shapes, they they get me at, uh, in the later stages of a piece like this. Well, mid to later stages. So I'll come, I'll come in and re re detail this a bit later, but I'm just getting the extra bits in there. And the shadows, of course, that they would cast. And again, these aren't final shadows. These aren't uh, final, final dark layers. But um, it is the bulk of it. So anything I do after this point is really just going to be, again, extra finessing. The wall itself is going to cast a decent enough shadow that a lot of this won't be, in, be showing up anyway. If 
afford to grab a little bit more right here. Yeah, this is good. By the time we're done doing this, I should be able to come in with that that uh, uh, the first the first real upper layer of, for the highlight, for which I will probably be mixing some of that pink in in, in together. Have a bit more paint up here. I am noticing it dragging more than it should because we're. Not quite dry brushing, as, as I mentioned. The last, the last big uh, dark layer will not be black. It will be uh, mostly a, a glaze of a blue. Usually, for me, that is um, this color that Golden makes called Smalt Hue. Uh, I love this because when it dries, uh, it dries super transparent. And when it does, it just amplifies all of the colors underneath. And if the colors underneath are already dark, it just makes them darker. Um, it's kind of one of my secret weapons for when I'm working. Not really a secret. I talk about it all the time, but it does um, change the, the the dynamic of a piece considerably. I be I've been using it for about I think six or eight years now. Just makes everything a bit easier. Not going crazy amount of out of uh, amount of detail in the uh, edge work, but I do need it to look uniform. Okay, flat back. Sorry about that. And I am trying to make a successful piece despite doing the video as well. I don't I don't have any uh, worries about this being an unsuccessful piece right now. Everything's turning out quite nice. And again, most of this is just this one brush, so you don't need a thousand fancy brushes even though I have a lot of them. Especially for a piece this simple and pure. You know what would be really fun is to put torches on these, which I may end up doing later on. This I do need to stand for and drop down. Uh, the uh, this because I got to turn this because we're doing the big rock. I don't know how much of this is going to show up. Actually, I should probably turn up. Uh, manual focus off for this because I really got to work the work this color into this shape. And I might add a little water just to keep my paint flowing. And again, as much as I'm covering up some of those initial layers, there's a lot here because I'm allowing the paint just the, or the brush just to drag that you're still seeing all the way through. So this is like the third, what, the third, fourth layer of paint on this. And we're just now getting close to what you're going to finally see in the piece uh, at the end. Not fun to this rock here. Seemed like a good idea, but it's kind of just there, you know? I don't know. I should be able to fix it, but 
feels just weirdly out of place is all. Probably because it wasn't in the initial skin. I wasn't supposed to add that much of a, a bigger element. And in fact, you know what? We're not even on the right angle for this anyway, so we're just going to cover the whole thing up. <laughs> Put it all in shadow. There. Fine. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to fix the mistakes that seemed didn't seem like mistakes, but were totally mistakes. That's yeah, completely hidden in there now. And we'll worry about the rest of it later. Okay. And it still looks fine. Nice heavy contrast. <clears throat> okay. So this is, yeah, this is basically dry now. Actually, even, even this stuff's basically dry. So, let me zoom back out here. Actually, before we get to the that highlight layer, as long as this this dark color is still here, <laughs> I'm actually going to spread this on this foreground uh, section. Uh, since that is just the uh, just sort of the dark that I'm looking for for this, and it does also help unify the the piece a bit more using that same dark. Uh, it won't stay exclusively this color, but it should help two things. One, help, help my eye focus on the rest of the piece right now. Also, I'm thinning this a lot more than I did anything else here because I just want this to spread. Um, as well as uh, start establishing uh, some of the other ideas here uh, that I had been thinking for the, uh, the foreground. Which is the foreground's gonna be not got not much more than the dark, but um, just getting it in there always helps, especially when you have the color. So don't waste the color. And remember perspective. Okay, that feels pretty good. Now at this point I've got a lot of excess color on my palette, which I don't need for the rest of, of today's session. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrape those into my one of my used paint jars. Most notably the blue, I'm not touching the blue again today. Uh, the red, I should need some of this black. I'm not touching again. Now that I, that's that's the other reason I did that. Since I don't want to, I'm not going to need it again. So I just want to get rid of that now. And then probably about 90% of that gray I don't need anymore either. So that can all go into the used paint jar for another day when I need it. And from here, I'm going to get out a third palette because I want to transfer the red uh, and this other color into a, its own isolated area. Won't need as large of a palette now, though. So gray, red, white. Probably going to need more of that white. That's all right. Actually, I want to get... I can't even remember what I used on that initial layer. Actually, those palettes are still sitting out from last week. And, uh, I think. Yeah. At least I think that was the palette from last week. Um, might have been for a different piece I was working on. But since I do still have that transparent uh, red iron oxide sitting out, I'm going to grab a little bit more of that because I feel like that's going to Breathe a little more life into this as well. So that, that. Touch more of the white. I actually do need a little bit of regular white, but I'm gonna grab my used white mix because I don't need it to be pure white. I just need it to be the general, the other knife, <laughs> I'm losing my knives. Just a regular white for getting the pink. 
And I won't be using, uh, even, even that, what I threw down is probably way too much. All right. And I am going to clean my water as well, because it's pretty brown and I need brighter colors. Didn't strictly clean my brush, but I did rinse it. So now I am going to dry it off a bit more now, though. So from here, it really is just starting to, to build in a bit more of those lights. And this will be the last layer I, I do for this piece today. Because at this point, I really will just have to let everything dry, especially this. Uh, and then, and then in the next part, we'll do sort of final detailing and glazing. So th this is sort of the last big bulky part of this. So I'm going to grab my other knife and mix a little bit of a, try to get, try to get close to that color, whatever that was. I think it was, it was the red plus the oxide and some white, if I remember correctly. Looks pretty close. Kind of a peachy color. Might have thrown some blue into that, but that's quite all right. We will we'll stick with that. It, it, it was the cobalt turquoise, if I, if if my palettes are to uh, be believed. I dried palettes in the corner, you know. Just a little bit. Uh, Yep, that's what that color is. Okay, good. So I'm not using this pure of a, of a, of a red for this. This is just a, a slight tinting color for this white. I'm just going to grab the, like, the tiniest little bit. Like we made this big pile, I'm just grabbing the tiniest little bit of that. Maybe a little bit of that extra orange. Just to offset it so it's not the pure out of the tube color. Yeah, that's good. So something like that. Now from here, similar to the to the brown or the yeah the, the that deep brownish color, I'm loading up the, the 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 brush. I'm not necessarily wiping it away for a dry brush. I still need to keep some paint on the on the brush itself. And then it's going to come in and just gently drag in very, very, very small increments around uh, the piece here. I don't want to overpower it with, with highlights. And actually, I do want to zoom in too. So yeah, I do want to give you guys a nice close up here because uh, this is where all, this piece really starts to come to life. Well, this, this piece and every other one I do like this. Remember what I said before about putting this layer in here and everything kind of popping in, in uh, the middle? Yeah, this, this is where this happens. So I will need a bit thicker paint right in here. It's okay to be dark because it's not going to be at the end. This, this is where I have to come over this rock again. I'm not going to be able to get the uh, the brush work right unless I do it and come over top of it. I still might trace back again. Haven't decided. Keep going back and forth with this. And again, this is just the texture of the canvas showing through.
I want to turn the canvas and I can't right now. I got you guys framed up. If I add more paint, the texture of the canvas would kind of disappear more. But I really want to maintain that where I can. If you notice, I'm kind of wiggling with the brush a little bit. It's, it's there, but it's back and forth, back and forth. And this is going to be shadowed in here because the light's coming in here. It's not going to, it's technically behind that, so i got to just do the top of it and then back in here. Steps. This one I do have to drop it and turn. Where are you guys at? There you are. Pretty close. The last, last layer I do will be closer to a pure white. And that's well not, not last, 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 last highlight. Because then when I glaze, everything is going to get toned back down a little bit again. So it won't be this bright. But it uh, should still be close. That feels pretty good. I've le really learned over the years, you can't, it, it's super easy to overwork stuff. So you really got to force yourself to do as minimally as possible <laughs> so you don't overwork a piece. And, then, and end up with things being a little too uh, muddy, essentially, and overworked. Just that little bit of extra, extra finesse. So that feels pretty good. So one more little thing before I uh, call this a session and a video. I'm going to do a little extra bit of this cast highlighting on, the, on these shadow rocks. Now obviously it can't be as bright. It won't be. It's in the shadow. But I think a little bit of that orange, a little bit of that... that Deep blackish color that I said I wasn't going to use again, but here we go. Just little res residual stuff I have in the corner, mixing with that orange. And this is just kind of very gently grays on that edge to give the indication of where that's at. You'd still you'd still see the shape, but it's in the shadow. Same thing with that blue line up top. Just ever so slightly.
just to kind of make it just yeah, just stand out a little bit. A little bit, a little bit of that white. Water it down. Just need to a slight indication of where it's at. And I don't even know if that's going to show up on camera a whole hell of a lot, but it's there, and it's in the dark. And once I do my my blue layer on the on the real under shadows of that, the rest of that should pop out a little bit more too. But that I believe is where I will go ahead and call this one, at least for uh, part four anyway. So in part five, it'll be really that last I would say ten percent push. So pretty much everything in terms of the grand composition and the lighting is done. So in part five, we will be doing the, the, the shadows with that smalt that I talked about. Uh, some extra detail work, I'll grab my liner brush for that. I'll probably be doing a little bit more zooming for that, letting you guys see the real close-ups uh, of that. Uh, I've been talking about glazing all, all uh, video today. Didn't really do any glazing here, uh, but that's going to be, again, that sort of that final 10% push. I'll grab some of my more transparent colors. Similar to the transparent red iron oxide, but I use the quinacridone nickelase of gold for that a lot, especially for a piece with a lot of reds in this, this one. Bring in some oranges, stuff like that, and just really make everything kind of glow a little bit. Um, we'll get in the sunbeams on, on that layer as well when I start playing with glazing liquid and really start pushing that, that, that color a bit more. And then uh, the last little bit will be the just that uh, some extra probably some textural work in the foreground. I'm thinking about grabbing some, uh, either some texture medium or, or like an iridescent color like the one I've been sitting on all day. Uh, just to give it a little extra shimmer. I'll drop in the figures probably right in here somewhere or roughly where they were. And that'll be, and that'll be uh, a, a piece after that point. But uh, for the time being, this was sort of the thicker, heavier, what I, I think I said in the top of the video of meat, but the meat and potatoes of a piece like this. And it really is just about that mid-tone shadow highlight balance, and that's what I do in almost every piece that I make. Of course, there was some little stuff in between. You know, you guys were uh, certainly here for that, the adding, adding the steps coming up and a couple little monuments here that really add a little bit extra of, uh, extra finesse and, and, and uh, story into this piece. And I'm really excited to get uh, back to part five, but uh, for the time being, this has been uh, part four of the meat and potatoes of, of uh, how I make a painting. Uh, so look forward to seeing seeing you guys in two weeks. So that's it for this week. So thanks guys for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, learned something, or just want to show your support, hit the like button. Get subscribed if you're not already. Check me out on the socials in the description box below, including the community Discord. This has been from Cinderblock Studios, reminding you to keep on creating, and I'll see you guys next time.